the last cycle that we are going to look at is um, uh, it's a reverse cycle. So, this is a power absorbing cycle as we had mentioned earlier. So, the refrigerant executes a cyclic process in this and interestingly enough even in the uh, real life um, uh, refrigerator or air conditioner the refrigerant executes a uh, cyclic process it, it, it may be treated as a system and it executes a cyclic process unlike uh, the Brayton cycle. Now, in the case of the Rankine cycle again even in real life uh, installations um, the water uh, executes uh, a cyclic process. It is in a separate circuit and it executes a cyclic process. There is some makeup water that is provided uh, at the periodic intervals, but apart from that we may consider that the water in the case of a Rankine cycle executes a cyclic process. The Brayton cycle is the one which is usually not run uh, as a cyclic process. Air is drawn in and then uh, combustion gases are exhausted. In the case of the vapor compression also uh, refrigerant executes a cycle. Uh, <coughs> if we represent this cycle in uh, uh, T s coordinates this is what the cycle looks like. So, again this also operates between two pressures. So, this is the condenser pressure denoted P c. And this is the evaporator pressure denoted P e. So, we um, uh, take this to be the starting point of the cycle state 1. So, here uh, the uh, refrigerant as you can see is a saturated vapor and uh, it is compressed to uh, from the evaporator pressure to the condenser pressure. In the case of an ideal process we end up at state 2 s. In an actual process with uh, which is adiabatic, but with internal irreversibilities we will end up at state 2. Okay. Uh, the high pressure high temperature uh, refrigerant is then cooled at constant pressure in the condenser until it becomes a saturated uh, liquid and this temperature is uh, taken to be the um, uh, the highest temperature I am sorry this is taken to be T h for purposes of calculating entropy generation. Okay. So, in the case of the uh, vapor compression cycle. This is taken to be the, uh, the saturation temperature corresponding to the condenser pressure is taken to be T h. So, the refrigerant leaves the uh, condenser as a saturated liquid. It is then throttled in a throttling valve as we have shown here. So, it is then throttled in a throttling valve to low pressure and low temperature. The low pressure being the evaporator pressure and it becomes a saturated mixture at the end of the throttling process. So, the evaporator temperature or the saturation temperature corresponding to the evaporator pressure is taken as T c. And um, the refrigerant now picks up heat from the refrigerated compartment. So, uh, as it picks up heat it also uh, evaporates until it becomes a saturated vapor and the cycle is repeated. So, let us look at an example of, um, uh, of a vapor compression cycle. So, an ideal vapor compression cycle using R134A operates with the refrigerated space at minus 5 degrees Celsius. So, that means T c is equal to minus 5 degrees Celsius. The refrigerant leaves the condenser as a saturated liquid at 30 degrees Celsius. So, that means this is equal to uh, T h. Refrigerant enters the compressor as saturated vapor at the rate of 0 0.0041 meter cube per second. Determine the power input to the compressor rate of heat removal from the refrigerator space in tons as COP and the rate of entropy generation. So, we assume the cycle to be ideal and take the isentropic efficiency of the compressor to be 100 percent, which means the process the compression process is uh, isentropic and uh, goes from 1 to 2 s. So, from the uh, temperature table corresponding to saturated vapor we can pick up specific volume at state 1, specific enthalpy at state 1 and specific entropy at state 1. 
Now, since the volume flow rate is given at inlet to the compressor, we can evaluate mass flow rate m dot. So, m dot is equal to v 1 dot divided by v 1. So, we may evaluate the mass flow rate as 0 0.0495 kilogram per second. Now, it is given that the refrigerant leaves the condenser as a saturated liquid which means H3 is equal to HF at 30 degree Celsius and S3 is equal to SF at 30 degree Celsius. Now, the uh, throttling process undergone by the refrigerant is actually uh, we can uh, take it to be an isenthalpic process. So, we take H4 to be equal to H3. Now, we apply steady flow energy equation to the individual components and evaluate uh, the quantities of interest. Now, before we do that, we need to actually evaluate the uh, entropy, I am sorry, we need to evaluate H2S. So, we know H1, H3 and H4, we need to know H2S. So, uh, you can see from here that S2S is equal to S1 and uh, P2S is um, uh, is also given. So, that is uh, P sat of 30 degrees Celsius. So, P 2 S is equal to P sat of 30 degrees Celsius which is 776 point kilo Pascal. S 2 S specific entropy is equal to S 1 equal to 0.9345. So, uh, you can see that and the uh, state 2 S is superheated and we can actually uh, calculate H2S to be 271.46 kilo joule per kilogram by interpolation. So, the compressor power required from SFEE comes out to be 1.184 uh, kilowatts. Now, of course, the most important uh, uh, performance parameter in the case of a refrigerator is the amount of heat that is removed from the refrigerator space. So, we may evaluate that as m dot times h 1 minus uh, h 4 and that comes out to be 7.622 kilowatts. Now, in the refrigeration community, it is customary to express uh, heat removed from the refrigerator space in units of tons okay, rather than kilowatts. Okay. Uh, so, generally uh, we say you know an uh, air conditioner is 1 ton or 1.5 ton and so on. But the definition of a ton of refrigeration is given here. 1 ton of refrigeration is defined as the heat removal rate that is required to convert 1 ton of water. 1 ton here uh, is 9 ton kilogram, it is not 1 metric ton, it is 1 ton which is uh, equal to 9 ton kilograms of liquid water at 0 degree Celsius into ice at 0 degree Celsius in 24 hours. So, it is the rate at which heat must be removed from 1 ton of water at 0 degree Celsius to convert it into ice at 0 degree Celsius in a span of 24 hours and is equal to 211 kilo joule per minute. So, if I convert this to tons, I get this to be 2.167 tons of refrigeration effect. And the COP for the cycle you may recall is uh, defined as QC dot divided by WX dot compressor and that comes out to be 6.44 for the ideal refrigeration cycle. This is somewhat high because the compression process is taken to be ideal. Uh, practical cycles will have COP values much less than this. Now, rate of entropy generation in the universe again is a sum of delta S system plus delta S surroundings and we have taken the R134A to be our system and since it executes a cyclic process delta S system is 0. Delta S surroundings uh, comes uh, I mean delta S surroundings is the sum of two things. One <coughs> the heat that is rejected in the condenser. So, the entropy of the surroundings increases as a result of heat that is rejected in the condenser and the entropy of the surroundings decreases as a result of heat that is absorbed by the system in the evaporator. <coughs> Accordingly, this uh, has a negative sign and this has a positive sign. Th and Tc are known. So, if you substitute the values, 
sigma dot comes out to be 0 0.6193 watt per Kelvin. So, in the previous two examples, we um, did all the calculations on a per unit mass flow rate basis. Here, mass flow rate is given. So, this uh, comes out with units of watt per Kelvin. So, this is the rate at which entropy is generated in the universe as a result of operation of this cycle. So, as I said, this uh, uh, is an ideal cycle. So, we have taken the isentropic efficiency to be 100 percent. In reality, we have to account for internal irreversibilities in the compressor. Uh, compressor efficiencies here will typically be of the order of about 70 percent or so, which is um, uh, quite far from the 100 percent that we have assumed. And other uh, additional complexities are also there in the cycle. We can never guarantee that it, uh, the refrigerant will leave the evaporator as a saturated liquid. Usually, it leaves the evaporator as a slightly superheated vapor that needs to be taken into account. And once again, it can never be guaranteed that the refrigerant will leave the condenser as a saturated liquid. Typically, it leaves as a compressed liquid with the state being over here. So, here the state is usually over here, here the state is over here. So, these sorts of uh, uh, departures from the ideal cycle in real life have to be accounted for when we do calculations for um, real life situations. So, that uh, concludes uh, the, uh, uh, the lectures for uh, this course. I hope that you found these lectures to be useful and that you are able to uh, understand and learn concepts. Um, in an unambiguous manner. Hopefully, the lectures would have helped you learn the concepts in a much better manner than uh, what you may have uh, understood earlier. If you had whatever you had seen before, hopefully, you would have learned better now and whatever new concepts you have learned, hopefully, you have understood the fundamentals and you would remember them as you go through the uh, higher level thermodynamics courses. Okay? I hope you enjoy the lectures. I wish you success in your pursuits.